This story is at points offensive and hurtful and um, uncomfortable, and I, at the onset I want to let you know that no one is more upset about it than I am. Uh, this is about the dumbest thing I've ever said in my entire life. My hometown is um, essentially, right now, uh, Donald Trumpville, USA. It is a um, highly conservative, highly evangelical Christian, highly ignorant place. And I tell you this because I am not any of those things. And I want you to know what it was that I grew up with. Shifting gears, I'm sure there's more than one person in the room here tonight that can attest to the power, the social um, fame, the, 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 the elevation that one achieves in the high school musical. My high school was terrible at football, terrible at pretty much all sports, and if you wanted to be anyone, anyone in our high school, you were in the musical. I was very fortunate my senior year that I was uh, selected to be the lead in the musical. I played the role of the king and the king and I. I shaved my head. I did the whole Yul Brenner thing. I lost 30 pounds. I still miss those days. I was a superstar. I was in every local paper. I had every solo. I danced with the pretty girl, et cetera, et cetera. I decided to go off to college to study music because I was going to be Jean Valjean. That's what I was going to do. So I go off, and the following May, I come back as a freshman in college to see Oklahoma, the, the next year's high school musical. Everyone is there. Everyone recognizes me. Everyone says, your hair grew back. Oh my God, you were fantastic. What's how school, oh my God. I was on cloud nine. A good friend of mine, coincidentally also named Michael, had um, auditioned for the lead in Oklahoma. He did not get it. Instead, he was chosen for the secondary male role and the, um, the, the gentleman that was chosen to play the lead in Oklahoma was a, a young man named Jeremy. Now, Jeremy was not popular. Jeremy was, and everyone knew this, gay. At a party after the show, I was talking to my buddy, Michael. His sister was there. Some of her friends from college had come. Uh, Jeremy was there. Some of my friends that I had graduated with were there. And I said to Michael, you killed it. I mean, I said that in the 1993 version. But I said, basically, you were awesome tonight. And I can't believe you didn't get the lead. And he said, oh, thank you very much. And I said, even more, I can't believe that fucking faggot beat you out for the lead in Oklahoma. It took about three seconds before I realized that Michael's sister and all of her friends were gay. One of them's name was Eric. Fast forward five years, becomes a very good friend of mine. And Eric says to me one time, remember that time you said faggot at that party? And I said, yep. And he said, I was the only person that wasn't pissed at you that night. And I said, why? And he said, because I knew that growing up in that town, you didn't know that being gay 
is about who you love, being gay was some media-driven sex thing. And I said, yeah. And he said, everybody still hates you. And I said, they deserve to. And he said, yeah, they do. You were kind of a dick. But what did, what did you learn? And I said, you know, I've never regretted anything more or never been more embarrassed than I was at that party that evening. And um, a few years ago, I ran into Eric. And I thanked him because I think what the 19-year-old me and the 42 today year old me have um, very different is that now I understand that who you love is none of anybody's fucking business.